Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we'll be looking at more prayers of the faith, and this time, Tantum Ergo. Tantum Ergo is the last two verses of an old Latin hymn, which was originally six verses in length, and written by St. Thomas Aquinas for the Feast of Corpus Christi, the Body of Christ. These days, this part is sometimes sung on its own, especially during certain worship or devotional ceremonies about the Eucharist. Because of this, it's primarily about the Eucharist. The song has an English translation, and because it's so relatively well known, I'll give the words to that translation first, but I'll be analyzing a translation that's closer to the Latin original. Down in adoration falling, lo, the sacred host we hail. Lo, o'er ancient forms departing, newer rites of grace prevail, faith for all defects supplying, where the feeble senses fail. To the everlasting Father, and the Son who reigns on high, with the Holy Ghost proceeding forth from each eternally, be salvation, honor, blessing, might, and endless majesty. Amen. This has basically the same meaning as the original prayer, and was translated this way partly so that it could be sung to the same music as the original. A more direct, literal translation couldn't be sung in the same way. However, it works just fine for analyzing, so let's take a look. Hence so great a sacrament, let us venerate with heads bowed. The Eucharist is being referred to here, the greatest of all the sacraments, and the only one that's worthy of worship due to actually being Jesus. And let the old practice give way to the new rite. Again, the Eucharist is a new rite by comparison to the law of Moses. It's not new now, and it wasn't new in St. Thomas Aquinas' day, but this is meant as a reference to Jesus, about whom it said, And therefore he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of his death for the redemption of those transgressions which were under the former testament, they that are called may receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Hebrews 9.15 Jesus formed a new testament, a new covenant with his people. Just as the Ark of the Covenant was the sign of the Old Covenant, the Eucharist is the centerpiece of the New Covenant. The Ark has vanished now, giving way to the Eucharist. Let faith provide a supplement for the failure of the senses. Our faithfulness to Jesus and our willingness to believe that the Eucharist is God should give us the ability to believe this, even if it's not something we can verify with our five normal senses. To the begetter and the begotten be praise and jubilation. Begetter refers to God the Father and begotten to God the Son. As it says in the Nicene Creed, Jesus is begotten but not made. He wasn't created by God at a certain point in time like some planet or star. He always existed with God, which is why we call him eternally begotten. Hail, honor, virtue also, and blessing too, to the one proceeding from both. Blessings, goodness, honor, and worship should also be given to the Holy Spirit, who proceeds, but again is not created by, the Father and the Son. Let there be equal praise. Amen. May all three persons of the Holy Trinity be appreciated and worshipped equally. So, this is a song about all three persons of God, and about God as the Eucharist, and how much each is worthy of worship and praise. Next time, what's the meaning of Immaculate Mary? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.